So I previously talked about the approach to categorizing interviews that is based on how structured the interview is. So according to this approach there are three types of interviews and these are unstructured, semi-structured and structured interviews. I also said that this is by far the most popular and the most common approach uh, to classifying interviews as well as the one that I believe to be the most practical. So now I will explain why I believe uh, this way of uh, categorizing or classifying interviews is in fact the most practical way. So now you may be wondering if there are three uh, general types of interview based on their structure, so semi-structured, unstructured and structured interview, what about all these other types that you, uh, you have heard uh, about or read about? So for example, participatory interview, a narrative interview, cognitive and conceptual and factual interview and possibly many, many other types. So uh, in general, the point I would like to make here is that you should uh, not necessarily worry about these different classifications because usually what happens is, and the reason I said uh, organizing the interviews into these different categories based on their structure is the most practical way is because all these other types of interviews basically fall under one of these three categories. So they are un uh, either unstructured or structured or semi-structured. So for example, another approach to categorizing interviews is based on the type of inf information that we are uh, hoping to gather or hoping to elicit during the interview. And uh, according uh, to this classification, there may be uh, such interviews as a factual interview or a conceptual interview. So factual interview is essentially an interview where, uh, as the name suggests, all you are interested in is uh, gathering certain very specific facts. Uh, so, for example, this can be used as uh, a technique in a police interrogation where all you want to know from your participants uh, or in this, in this case uh, perhaps suspects is a more suitable word is whether, for example, they were uh, at a given lo uh, location at a given point in time. That's all you need to know. And uh, the conceptual interview is quite the opposite. So conceptual interview is uh, the one in which you are interested in uh, eliciting detailed information uh, about how your participant uh, defines certain uh, concepts about the participant's beliefs and uh, perceptions, constructions of the social uh, reality, so to speak. So, uh, so basically about their uh, perceptions of certain concepts and their definitions of certain concepts. So, for example, happiness may mean two uh, completely different things to, uh, to two people. So in a conceptual interview you may uh, be very interested in how people define happiness, what happiness means to them. And importantly, factual interview and conceptual interview can also be seen as a structured and semi-structured interview respectively. Because uh, the factual interview will be very structured, as I said, you're not really interested in uh, listening to the participants' detailed stories. Uh, you just want to know uh, short answers, yes or no, or where were you at this time. And the conceptual interview, uh, of course, it will be uh, less structured because you, although you still have some structure, so it's not really an unstructured interview, because you still want to hear about this particular topic or this particular phenomenon, uh, of course it will be less structured than the structured interview uh, or the factual interview, because you want your participants to talk about their uh, constructions of, of the reality or their definitions of whatever you want uh, them to talk about. So the point, as I said, is that although uh, these uh, two different, uh, these two names, conceptual and factual interview, suggest some other kind of classification, other kinds of categories, uh, essentially they still fall under this uh, semi-structured, structured or unstructured classification. Another classification uh, may be based on uh, your approach to interviewing, how uh, you are conducting the interview and how you are expecting, uh, what you are expecting from your participants. So for example a narrative interview in which you 
want to let your participants speak and provide you with these uh, these long uh, narratives. So uh, you will be asking some some general questions that invite the participants to expand and to uh, to really talk with uh, as much detail as they want to. You don't really want to interrupt. So for example, you start the interview by saying, uh, "Please tell me everything about your childhood," and then you just sit back and, and listen to your participants. The point is not only to uh, to gather uh, the content of, of their stories, so what they're talking about, but also to observe and analyze the way they uh, construct uh, these narratives, the way they, uh, they present the story to you, what they focus on, how they change topics, so all these very detailed things. And cognitive interview uh, is even a more interesting approach. Uh, I wouldn't say it's as popular as I wish it was uh, because it's a great, great technique. It's based on uh, psychology and it's based on uh, how police interrogation uh, techniques work. Uh, I previously talked about it in one of my videos on my YouTube channel uh, but basically cognitive during the cognitive interview what is happening is that uh, you are asking the kind of questions that are likely uh, to trigger uh, your participants' memory. So, for example, you may be asking them about smells and sounds on a, on a given day. And I, I know it sounds a little bit funny, uh, if not ridiculous, but it really works. And I used it in, uh, in one of my studies uh, where I was uh, asking my participants about the time they they came uh, to Scotland, they were migrants, I was asking them about the time they came to Scotland and sometimes, in some cases, uh, it would be uh, 10 years uh, before, 10 years before the interview, so of course it's a lot of time and initially they didn't remember uh, the details of the first day, for example uh, but once I started to ask them about these smells and sounds uh, they actually started to remember uh, these things, so for example one participant remembered the smell uh, coming from McDonald's, uh, which uh, as a result uh, resulted in, in this participant uh, remembering the whole story of when he went to McDonald's and what happened there and uh, the study was about uh, the language so uh, so in that story he talked about uh, his shock when he encountered uh, the person working at McDonald's and when he first uh, heard this Scottish accent. So the point is that by uh, asking the participant to remember these different weird things uh, such as smells and sounds uh, they are uh, beginning to reconstruct the whole situation more effectively so this is cognitive interview there are many other characteristics of cognitive interview uh, so you may be asking your participants to remember the story backwards <laughs> which is even uh, more unusual I did not try uh, this technique but anyway so cognitive and, and uh, narrative interviews again fit the category, usually fit the category of semi-structured interviews. Sometimes narrative interview may be almost like an unstructured interview. And then there are even more types of interviews. Uh, so for example interviews based on uh, on the relationship, uh, the dynamics between the interviewer and the interviewee. So uh, there is discursive interview which is essentially um, very much focused on, on the power relations between the interviewee and the interviewer. Uh, there is a participatory interview, which is nothing unusual really, it's just based uh, participatory research means that the researcher is participating, is uh, physically present at the site, at the research site, uh, in brief of course, so if you'd like to know more about this technique you may explore it further, but the point is again that uh, there is nothing uh, in either of these two types, there is nothing uh, unusual or nothing that would not be uh, normally uh, covered uh, by one of these classifications that I mentioned before. So the, the, the ones based on structure. So most likely there will be uh, semi-structured interviews. So considering all these types of interviews, the point I would like to make uh, is simply that you should not uh, panic when you see all, all these different categorizations and classifications because I know it happens quite often, same happens with uh, world views and ontologies and epistemologies. It's quite common to uh, to see all these different uh, dif uh, different categories and classifications and then start to panic because uh, eventually you stop uh, understanding which uh, classification to follow 
and what falls within what essentially and same happens with interviews sometimes you see all these categories and and you start by reading about uh, about semi structured and structured and unstructured interviews but then eventually as you start reading about these different uh, types of interviews you start to freak out and wonder okay so what you know what happened to that original uh, classification and that original classification is uh, still there so as i said all these other specific types usually fall under one of these three uh, categories one of these three types so they are either structured unstructured or uh, semi-structured and most importantly when you plan your study you should not worry about uh, whether the interview will be uh, a narrative interview or a factual conceptual or any other types what you really need to worry about is are your research questions of course and uh, the aims of your study so just think about the study think about uh, what kind of information you need to infer uh, you need to gather from your participants and then uh, it will become almost natural and almost common sense uh, most likely uh, you will end up doing something uh, more of a semi-structured interview uh, simply because uh, in most studies this seems to be uh, the most suitable method which does not mean that I discourage you from experimenting with uh, with all these other types of interview but usually uh, you will end up doing a semi-structured interview uh, perhaps a structured interview and uh, later on as you develop your approach also through uh, piloting uh, the interview through your own experience uh, you may start experimenting with uh, some uh, more specific approaches to uh, to asking questions or uh, to basically how you conduct the interview uh, this happened for example in my study when based on my pilot study I realized that I should give my participants more freedom uh, to talk about their experience so what I ended up doing was really a mixture of a cognitive interview because as I mentioned I also asked them about these uh, these different senses and smells and and sounds uh, and a narrative interview because I realized after the pilot study that the best way to elicit the information that I want to gather is to let them speak uh, if uh, when the interview uh, was guided by my strict questions uh, they couldn't really focus and they quite often uh, they seemed stressed uh, they couldn't remember they felt like they have to give me the answer quickly and they couldn't but uh, then I realized that if I just ask them general questions and as I said uh, about uh, the narrative interview I simply gave them a general question such as uh, can you remember uh, your first experience at work and and then I would simply give them time uh, to answer and uh, in the long run this uh, this proved to be a very effective method and importantly at that time I did not really know that it's going to be a narrative interview or a cognitive interview I did know a little bit about cognitive interview but I didn't really know about this narrative interview uh, type so uh, as I started to describe my methodology uh, and reading uh, started reading about all these different types of interview I realized that it was actually uh, very close to narrative interview and uh, eventually this is what I des uh, described my interview as so I said it was a semi-structured uh, interview with elements of cognitive interview and narrative interview so this is what happens it's not it's not something that you should worry too much in advance uh, perhaps this general uh, outline this general layout of the interview of course it will you will have some kind of idea whether you want to be an ethnographer and conduct a completely unstructured interview because you're going to spend a year uh, with a tribe in a jungle for example you would know that right uh, or you're going to have a normal uh, semi-structured interview and for example in a school uh, so this is the kind of information you'll know anyway and then as I said all these uh, more detailed types of interview do not worry about it initially but of course uh, do read about it and then after the study or after when you actually get to your methods chapter then you may start uh, worrying about uh, which classification to use